Hello everybody, this is Cart the Cat, and welcome to your 15th Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over the last two meta methods that we didn't go over in our object-oriented programming in meta tables tutorial. And I know last tutorial I said that we'd be going over modules, but I've run into some problems working with modules in ZeroBrain. Uh, it's because it's the uh, ZeroBrain's looking for the module file somewhere other than where I thought it would, so I have to do some research on that. It will be the next tutorial. And when I was looking through the book to see what I had left to do, this is the last tutorial before we go on to all of the predefined modules in Lua, and then after that we move on to the C library. So we're getting close to the end, or at least the end of the just Lua tutorials. But now moving on to the video. So the first meta method that we're going to go over is not really a meta method, it's actually a meta field. And this is called the underscore underscore mode meta field. So uh, we'll say t equals empty table and set meta table t, and we'll just create the function, the uh, table right within the parameters. And we'll say underscore underscore mode. And this is actually just a string. And first, we're just going to give it the string v. And I'll explain this in a second. So what the underscore underscore mode meta field does is it defines whether your table has weak keys and weak values. And what this means is that just the reference that to some object that the table holds isn't enough to keep it from being garbage collected, which just means deleted. So say we have uh, x equals another empty table in here. So, or actually, Let's do this example a bit better. So we'll say x equals empty table, and then we'll say t dot, or yeah, we can say t dot x also equals empty table. So normally, if we were to say x equals nil, so if we didn't have this underscore underscore mode meta table set to v, then even though we set x to nil, this table here wouldn't be garbage collected because it still has one reference to it and that reference is t.x. But since we do have the meta field set to v, this reference alone that's stored within the table isn't enough to keep this table from being garbage collected. So even though this table has a reference to it, it's ignored by the garbage collector and the garbage collector will still take the table and then this reference will be set back to nil. So let's show this. We'll say uh, we'll go print t.x, and this will just give us some table ID. And then we'll set x to nil, and we'll call a global function called collect garbage. Uh, it doesn't really, the parameters don't matter. I may go over this in a bit more detail later, but probably not. This just forces a garbage collection, collection cycle, which just means it deletes all objects with no references to them. So now, if we print t.x again, and we run the program. The first output is table and then it's table ID and the second time we get nil. So the table was deleted once we forced the garbage collection cycle even though we still had a reference to the table within t.x. So this shows that the reference that's stored within the table itself is not enough to keep the object from being garbage collected. So this is a pretty useful meta table. You usually use it when you're working with large amounts of data like if you want to have some table that's kind of like a table of contents for all the data that you're storing but you don't want that table of context to be a table of contents sorry to be able to hold that data from being garbage collected then you would set the table of contents table to have weak values and that's what the underscore underscore mode being the string v is called it's called the table having weak values so you can also say that a table has weak keys like this. You set the underscore underscore mode to the string k. And this isn't nearly as useful. I I really can't see any use for it. And what it means is that the table has keys that are an object, like a table or a function, which I've never seen done outside of this example. And the reference that the table stores of that key isn't enough to keep that key in scope and 
or not in scope. It doesn't keep. It's not enough to keep the key from not being garbage collected, or from being garbage collected. And once the key's gone, that means you have no way to access that value in the table, so it's also garbage collected. So let's just show this. So x will still be set to empty table. And now we'll say t at position x, so we're using the table ID as a key, and we'll set it equal to hello. And then we will print t at x, and then we will say x equals nil, and then we'll force a garbage collection cycle, and then we have to print out all the values. Actually, before we, instead of setting x to nil, what we'll do is we'll set x to a new table, and this table will be a completely separate table from this one. They'll have different table IDs and will be tr treated as completely different. And now we'll say t at x equals, uh, I don't know, uh, hello2. I could have thought of something creative, but I didn't. So now we can go and print out all of the values in our table. So we don't really need the key, it doesn't help us much. So for underscore v in pairs t do and we'll just print out v and end. So when we run this, we get hello, uh, I should have put the uh, print t at x here. Now when we run this we get hello, hello2, and then hello2 again. So what happened is we created our x table and we set t at the position of the table x to the string hello. And then we just printed that out. So, whoa. So that prints out this. And then we set x to a new table that's treated as a completely separate table with a different ID. And then we said t at that x equals hello2. And because the table has weak keys, the reference that the table holds to this key x, or it's not really called x anymore, the reference that the table t holds to the table identifier that lets us access hello isn't enough to keep that table from being garbage collected. So when we force the garbage collection cycle after printing out hello2, which is where we get this from, so when we force the garbage collection cycle, that key is deleted from the table, the table's garbage collected, and since the key is deleted from the table, we don't really have any way to ac or we don't have any way to access hello. It's this old uh, version of x that's being garbage coll collected, not the new one. So we don't have any way to access this position hello, and therefore it's just uh, deleted from the table and garbage collected too. So then, when we go through and print out all the values in our table, we only have one, and that's hello2, which is where we get this print of hello2. So this may seem pretty confusing. It's a lot more confusing to me, at least, than the weak values, but you'll probably never use it. I, again, have no idea why you would. And also, there is a third mode you can set the table to, and that's KV. It means it has weak keys and weak values. So it's... I mean, you're not really losing any performance by just setting your table to KV, so I guess I'd recommend just always using this. But if you know you're only using weak values, then I guess it may be more efficient to just have it have weak values. So that's all for weak keys and values. The Lua book goes into a bunch of weird, confusing examples on how you can use each one. But uh, this is a pretty confusing topic on its own. Uh, I recommend watching this a few times and looking up some more examples that aren't so confusing of it uh, just to see how it works because this is a confusing thing, but once you figure it out, at least the weak values will be very useful and will make sense once you figure it out the first time. So that's all for weak keys and values. If you do want to see the confusing examples from the book, the book's online, just go to the Lua website, find the documentation, and read the chapter on weak keys and values and finalizers. And that's a nice segue, finalizers are what we're going to go over next. So we set the underscore underscore gc meta field, or meta uh, method this time, for finalizers, and gc stands for garbage collector, which will make sense in a second. So if you're familiar with uh, object-oriented programming destructors and classes, then this is pretty much what this is. So if you're not familiar with that, 
what the finalizer meta method does is it sets a function that will be run when the table is garbage collected. So in this case, when our t table is garbage collected, uh, the function that we're about to set here will be run. So let's just set a simple function. We'll print table t is being garbage collected. So now if we were to set t to nil and force a garbage collection cycle and we run this, then we get an error. I missed the end parentheses here and I missed another one somewhere. Where is that? Hmm. One second. Oh, I found the problem. I forgot to put end at the end of the function. And we'll put a semicolon here just for uh, clearness. Now if we run this, then the program runs properly. And even though we haven't printed anything, or it doesn't look like we've printed anything, when the t table is garbage collected, uh, table t is being garbage collected is printed out because once the table is garbage collected, this function is run. So the underscore underscore gc meta method takes one parameter, we'll just call it o, and the parameter is just the table that's about to be garbage collected. So let's add something to the table, we'll say x equals 1, and here we'll just say o dot x as an extra print parameter, and this should print 1, and it does, table t is being garbage collected, and then 1. So you can, the when the uh, finalizer function is called, the table hasn't been garbage collected yet, it still exists, you can still access any of its members, and right after the function ends, it's garbage collected. So uh, you can still access the table during the finalizer with the parameter. So uh, the last thing we have to go over with finalizers is, is a small technicality that uh, you probably won't run into much, but it's still important to note. So if we were to make this an empty table here, or we can, I don't know, just set underscore underscore mode to k, just so we don't have an empty meta table, doesn't really matter. We're not actually going to be using the weak keys. And then, down here, we were to say, uh, we actually have to say mt equals this because we need an external reference to the meta table. So we'll just call that mt. So now we've created a meta table, it just has underscore underscore mode in it, it doesn't have a finalizer. And then we set that meta table to our t table. And then afterwards, we say mt dot underscore underscore gc equals, uh, I probably should have kept the function. Function, just keep the parameter o, we're not actually going to use it. Print, I'm not going to write that out again, we'll just print hello. And end. So now, even though we didn't have an underscore underscore gc uh, when we created the meta table and set it to t, we created one later. So you would think that uh, this meta table now has a finalizer that will be called when we collect garbage, but when we run it, nothing happens. And the reason for that is that finalizers work a little bit differently than other meta tables or meta fields. So when you set the, a meta table with a f the underscore underscore g meta method in it to a table, that table is specially marked that uh, to be finalized. So it's marked with a mark that just says, before you delete this table, run this function. So you can't, or if the underscore underscore gc meta field is nil in your meta table, then even if you change it later, the table still won't have a finalizer and that finalizer won't be called when it's garbage collected. Now there is a pretty simple solution to this. So in some strange case where you would need to set your underscore underscore gc finalizer later, when you create the meta table, you can just say underscore underscore gc equals true. And the reason this works is because the table will be marked for finalization no matter what as long as the underscore underscore gc meta field is true, or meta method is true, or isn't nil, I should say. So as long as you have something there, some placeholder value, it doesn't matter what, as long as it's not nil, the table will be marked for finalization and you can set your underscore underscore gc function later so this will work again it prints hello
So that's all for finalizers, and that's also all for this tutorial. So in the next video, we will go over modules. I'll figure out how it works with ZeroBrain and uh, tell you about that in the next video. So I'll see you then.